On Sunday the 5th of April we cruised from Westlake on the Trenton Mersey Canal to Broadhurst Swing Bridge on the Macclesfield Canal. We got underway about 7.15 on Sunday morning. Good morning Pat. It was only about a 30 minute cruise from our overnight mooring to Harcastle Tunnel. We arrived there at 8 o'clock and after the lock keeper checked our license we went straight in. It's 2,926 yards long and was completed by Thomas Telford in 1827. It runs parallel to the older Brindley Tunnel but was closed in 1914 after a partial collapse. The tunnel's only wide enough to carry traffic in one direction at a time and boats are sent through in groups alternating northbound and southbound. Ventilation is handled by a large fan at the south portal. That's the end that we ended. We were based at Etruria for a while when we owned Ursula so we've been through this tunnel quite a few times. Yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It takes about 40 minutes to go through it. There are some bends in it and the roof level changes, so for the first time cruisers it can be a bit scary and a little difficult to navigate. Isn't that right, Yvonne? Oh no! What happened? Yes, Yvonne, that's what that little scraping noise was on the bend. Actually, there was no damage to the boat, just a little bit of paint was missing. After we came out the tunnel, Mandy found this gangplank attached to the bow of the boat. It came in very handy because it was a lot sturdier than the one supplied by marine cruisers. By 9am we'd reached Harding Woods Junction. This is where we joined the Cheshire Ring. The ring itself is 97 miles long and has a total of 92 locks. We'll be cruising the ring, but also taking some interesting side trips. Oops! Instead of taking shots of the signpost, I should be watching what I'm doing as I turn off the Trenton Mersey onto the Macclesfield. No problem, we made it. To be historically correct, this is not the Macclesfield. It's the Hall Green branch of the Trenton Mersey. We'll reach the Mac in one mile. These are the bottom locks of the Red Bull flight. They're on the Trenton Mersey and we'll be coming down them in 11 days. A short distance after the junction is Pool Lock Aqueduct. This is where the canal crosses over the top of the Trenton Mersey. This is looking back up the Trenton Mersey from the aqueduct. Mandy takes us through our first lock, Hall Green. And now we're really on the Mac. This stop lock has a fall of about 6 inches and controls the water level between the Mac and the Trenton Mersey. These impressive one mile markers are carved out of carriage stone. There are 27 of them along the towpath. They were lost because at the start of World War II they were buried in order to remove any indication that could assist the enemy troops in finding their way. In the early 1980s, a group of canal enthusiasts found 24 of them and restored them. New ones were cut to replace the three that could not be found. She made it! At one time there were 78 smaller quarter milestones, but these have all been stolen or destroyed. Ok, trivia time. I mentioned earlier that there were 27 one milestones, but the Mac is only 26 miles long. So why 27 stones? Unfortunately the video clip is not very good quality. But it will give you some idea of how rural the Macclesfield Canal is.
Oh yes, the answer to the trivia question is... The mileage marker at Marple Junction has zero miles on it. I think this was our first swan sighting. You can just about make out Kimberly Dawn as she crosses the Watery Lane Aqueduct. This is Morris Bridge just outside Congleton. There are six of these types of bridges on the Mac and they're called Changeover, Crossover, turnover or snake bridges. The towpath sometimes switches sides and the objective of the bridge is to enable the horse to cross over the canal without having to untie it from the boat. It was great weather for cruising. By one o'clock we made it to Congodon with its impressive railway viaduct. It's 114 foot high, 231 foot long, and each arch spans 50 foot. <laughs> 